These people are amongst the greatest quiz players in Britain. Together they make up the Eggheads, arguably the most formidable quiz team in the country. The question is, can they be beaten? Welcome to a special celebrity edition of Eggheads, the show where a team of five quiz challengers pit their wits against possibly the greatest quiz team in Britain. Here they are, the Eggheads. Hello. Hello. Oh gosh, muted today. Well, You're a little bit in awe, are you? Semi-muted. Oh, of course. <laughs> see. Yeah, we're taking you down, Eggheads. Yeah. Okay, they're sensing danger already. <laughs> Doing their best to topple the Eggheads today are da did did dum Now, everyone <laughs> can... <laughs> team name. Everyone has already demonstrated their quizzing prowess by winning an episode of Celebrity Mastermind. Eggheads go, ooh. 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 <laughs> this, honestly, they're already sledging. Will they be able to repeat their successes against our own quiz goliaths here? Let's meet them. I'm Steve Ryder, sports presenter on ITV and BBC for the best part of 40 years. Hello, I'm Emma Kennedy and I'm an author and screenwriter and I won Celebrity MasterChef in the world's greatest year, 2012. Hello, I'm Joe Fattorini and I'm the wine expert on Channel 5's The Wine Show. Hello, I'm Samira Ahmed. I'm a journalist. I present Front Row, the Radio 4 Arts programme and Newswatch on BBC One. Hello, I'm Mitch Benn, comedian, songwriter and author and I achieved two things on Celebrity Mastermind. One, I won and two, I stretched the definition of the word celebrity beyond all previous limits. Steve and team, hello. Hi, Hi Jeremy. Jeremy. Great to see you. Da, di, di, dum is the mastermind theme tune. Yeah, we're not so sure about the dum on the end. Da, 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 rather than dum, dum. Oh, I see. Right. So there could be a kind of call and response yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, not dum, dum. dum da, da. Okay, right. But have you done a little bit of strategizing today? We, we, we know what we're doing. Very yeah. much. And Samira has been sort of leading this. Yeah. She's been in charge. We've I've had a flow helped. chart. I've yeah. been pinning things up with string. Yes, yeah, it's a very good idea. People's weak spots. Yeah, yeah. we're yeah. just praying for spot, certain categories. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Gosh, okay, here we go. Every day there is a thousand pounds worth of cash up for grabs for our challenger's chosen charity. If they fail to defeat the eggheads, we of course roll the prize money over to our next show. So, da 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 dum da da. They've won the last two games against the celebs. So that means there's three thousand pounds for you to play for today for your charity. And the first head-to-head -head battle is on the subject of music. So one of you, please, against either Beth, Chris, Barry, Kevin, or Judith. Yeah. No, I think uh, it's, 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 it's going to be me, Mitch. Mitch. the guitar man, and Kevin. it's going to be Kevin. Kevin, we're going. Oh, I say. Yeah. Okay. Pitching straight in. Mitch from Da 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 Dum versus Kevin, who's got his own mastermind history, of course, haven't you? Oh, well, a couple of times, yeah. One in the second time, right? Right. More than 20 years ago now, amazingly. Gosh. All right. To ensure there's no conferring, would you please take your positions in the question room? How are you feeling, Mitch? Oh, right. <laughs> I, I feel like we need your guitar in there. Yeah. I, I've never seen you without your guitar. I know, feeling slightly naked. Because your songs are, are brilliant, there's always a <laughs> twist in them. I suppose it's it's comedy rock, would we call it, as a genre? Oh, I mean, one of the good things about being a kind of a, a musical paradise is you get to play every kind of music eventually. You know, like opera all the way through to heavy metal, depending on what was required at the time. Now, your specialist subject on Celebrity Mastermind was Peter Cook. It was. So we were in the comic zone with, with that. Why, why did you choose him? Well, the only person I'd read two different biographies of was Peter Cook. So I thought, I'm probably close to having an exhaustive knowledge of Peter Cook than of anything, so I won't be cooking. And here we are on music, which is your central interest. I guess, yeah. But then again, of course, music ranges so wide, doesn't exactly, it? So, exactly, exactly. Yeah. All right, let's see how we do. You've taken on Kevin, known as the Grandmaster. Mm -hmm. Your choice, Mitch, would you like to go first or second on music? First, please. Good luck. Which of these albums returned to number one in the UK charts in October 2017, 27 years after it first reached the top of the charts? Was it Graceland by Paul Simon, Listen Without Prejudice by George Michael, or Thriller by Michael Jackson? Right. Well, by process of animation, Graceland came out in 1986, Thriller came out in 1982. Fairly sure Listen Without Prejudice came out in 1990. It's Listen Without Prejudice. It is indeed. Well done. Listen Without Prejudice. Great stuff. Okay, one point to you. Kevin. Wannabe was the title of which girl band's debut number one hit single? Girls Aloud, Little Mix, or Spice Girls? No, back to the mid-90s with that. That was uh, Spice Girls. 
Can you sing it for us? No. Spice Girls is right. Back we go. <laughs> Mitch? Yes. In which year was the singer Craig David born? 1971, 1981, or 1991? I'm going to say 81, because he was having hits around 2000. I seem to recall him being about 19 at the time. Definitely not 91, because he would have been about 8. And not 1971, because that would make him almost the same age as me, and he's not. So I'm going to say 81. 1981 is correct. Well done. Two out of two. Kevin, these are the opening lines. To which classic rock track... What will you do when you get lonely and nobody's waiting by your side? You've been running and hiding much too long. You know it's just your foolish pride. Is it Purple Haze by Jimi Hendrix? Living on a Prayer by Bon Jovi? Or Layla by Derek and the Dominoes? Uh, I should recognise that, but I don't. Um, I'm going to have to take a stab here. Uh, no, I don't, don't recognise it, so I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say Living on a Prayer. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, you've got it wrong. Yeah. It is Layla by Derek and the Dominoes. Eric Clapton. Oh, okay, so this is interesting now. You get this one right, and you will have knocked out the world quiz champion, Mitch. Uh huh. So just focus now on this third question. Which name completes the title of this best selling 1987 album, Introducing the Hardline According to Elvis Costello, Terence Trent Darby, or Nick Hayward? I remember this because it was a weirdly pompous sounding album title, uh, but not half as pompous as the titles of his next couple of albums, which are neither fish nor flesh, and, oh, what was his third one, the comeback album called? It's Terence Trent Darby, it's Terence Trent Darby. It is Terence Trent Darby, three out of three, you're in the final round, well done. You've knocked out somebody who is a British quiz champion 11 times, world quiz champion at least six times, European quiz champion. All of that, you're gone, Kevin, I'm sorry. It's looking good go. for our challenges. Return to us, please, we'll play round two. Well, a very good start for our challenges. Da -de -de -dum. No, <laughs> no, no, no. They, they lost no brains from the final round. The Yankees kids have not just lost the brain, they've lost Kevin. And your next subject is science. Who wants this? That's I'm out. Sorry, guys. Yeah. What do we say? I don't know. Go on. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm prepared to, yes. Okay, yeah. Lay down my life for my friends. Okay. And you, <sighs> I'm going to have a go. Oh, yeah, because I think Kevin. wine and science are a lot of overlaps. Yeah. And any egghead except for Kevin. Oh. Um, can I... Beth? Can I Beth? Can I go with Beth? Is, actually, it is a verb. <laughs> you can. Can, 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 I, can I Beth this round? You can Beth it. <laughs> Joe from Da Di Di Dum <laughs> versus Beth from the Eggheads. Please go to the question room now. Joe, I'm thinking it would have been food and drink for you, ideally. Well, it would have been ideally. I mean, there's an element of science that sort of spills over into particular, particularly the wine. But uh, no, uh, in the end, one of us had to take this. I'm going I'm to give it a go. Good stuff. And your specialist subject on Celebrity Mastermind was what? It was um, the English Meridian, two degrees west. All the points on an Ordnance Survey map are all measured off two degrees west of the Greenwich Meridian, because otherwise Wales would look peculiar. It would get sort of stretched by the way that mapping conventions work. And um, I live on it. So I thought, well, I live on this line, and it seems interesting. It was anything a 1,000 metres either side of two degrees west from, it's pretty much Berwick-upon-Tweed to Poole in Dorset, with a little bit of Fraserburgh in Scotland. The best did you know about this? No, I didn't. It's fast. It's fascinating. fascinating. So it goes what through your house, does it? Basically? It goes right through my house. In, in fact, if I park and I've got the sat nav on, it's sort of zero zero zero. You know, one is just ever so slightly off. I think my car's about ten yards off the line. Now tell us about your your love of wine and where it came from. The story goes, I think I was about seven at a party. My grandfather had uh, some nice wines, and I was discovered. I think on a sofa having drunk probably the greatest wine I'll ever try in my lifetime. So I started very high, it was a Latour 45, and I've never had anything as good as that since. <laughs> I've had older wines, I had something from the 18th century, we had a, a, a wine from the, the late 18th century once, and I've had more expensive wines as well, but that is one of those sort of, you know, pinnacle wines. So uh, that was probably the first thing I ever had. And I remember being rather snooty about Mattis Rosier to wedding the next <laughs> <laughs>
And you, so, so you can be ruined by good wine, can't you? That's the trouble, I always think. Well, you can be ruined by it. I mean, in the end, it's been the making of me because I now get to just travel around the world going and drinking really interesting bottles of wine in lots of lovely places. But, you know, it can... I, I do struggle sometimes. I mean, I drink, you know, regular wines like everybody else, but I'm quite picky about the things that I go and have. I was watching you in Chile on the wine show and, and thinking it, it was just the most beautiful experience because it wasn't just about the drink, was it? It was about everything. Well, look, there's, there's this trope within wine people. They say, oh, it's all about what's in the bottle. And I generally work about it's mostly about what's outside the bottle and then you get in, stuck inside of it. Wine is made in gorgeous places, often by fascinating people who do interesting things. And I love all that, Karen. Good stuff. Well, science, Joe. And would you like to go first or second? I'll definitely go first. Here we go. First question. Good luck, Joe. See if you can follow Mitch into the final. Which of these is the name of various species of bat native to Madagascar, Australia, Indonesia and mainland Asia? Flying fox, flying stoat or flying badger? Um, definitely not flying badgers because they would be huge, I imagine. Um, and indeed stoats, but it, the flying fox is a name that you get, you know, for other things. So I am going to go for flying fox. Again, is he right? Yes. Yes, you're right. It's flying fox. Well done. Okay, Beth, to catch up. Leonardo da Vinci is often credited with making the first designs for which of these things? Microwave oven, parachute or computer? Uh, well, I know he did the first designs for flying machines. Probably to get out of a flying machine, you'd need a parachute. Parachute is right. Joe, back to you for your second question. John Logie Baird, the man often credited with inventing television, was born in which year? 1688, 1788 or 1888? Um, right, uh, process of elimination. 1688 is going to be too early. 1888 is going to mean that he's sort of in his prime in the 20s and 30s, which feels uh, kind of right, because 1788 would have meant that he would have invented television in the mid-19th century. So I'm going to go 1888. 1888. Edgar, if, if he was 1788, would he have been walking around with a sword and stuff, or give us oh, an oh, idea of what was going on in yeah. the well, 1780s? Not that there wasn't just electricity. Just coming up to the French Revolution. Just coming up to the French, yeah, they didn't have televisions in the French Revolution, no. There was not, no electricity. No. There was no electricity. That's a good point, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I'm not going to be able to argue you off 1888, Jeremiah. You're absolutely right. Well done. Okay. Beth. What type of animal is a whelk? Sea snail, sea snake, or sea cucumber? I think they're apparently nice to eat with vinegar, but I've never had them. That um, I think they are sea snails. They are sea snails. Well done. Two, two. Third question. Let's see if you can do what uh, Mitch did. Give it a try. And to throw Beth off. When exposed to the elements for a length of time, Joe, copper will develop an external patina of which colour? Yellow, pink or green? Uh, I think I might know this. Um, well, except I think I've sometimes seen sort of pinkish... Uh, yeah, I have certainly seen a pinkish hue, but I'm pretty certain it's not yellow. I think it's... Um, it's not it's not verdigris. Anyway, it's, it's a greenish kind of hue, I think, when it oxidises. Copper, uh, when copper oxidises, it goes kind of green. You get it sometimes on roofs and things. So I'm going to go green, definitely. Yeah, I've seen it on Ruse. Green is right. Well done. Three out of three. You challenges are playing well. Haven't got a question wrong so far. Beth, to stay in. The silvery white metal radium is found in the ore of which other element? Uranium, hydrogen or lithium? I think that the Curies were working with pitch blend. And I think pitch blend is an ore of uranium. Uranium is your answer. Let's check this with Barry. Barry? Oh, definitely, yes. You're absolutely right, Beth. Well done. Uranium. So three each after three questions, and we go to sudden death, Joe. Okay. I feel at least Honor is sort of satisfied at this point. <laughs> <laughs> so it gets a bit harder. I don't give you alternatives. Okay. CN, the capital C, small n, is the chemical symbol for which radioactive element? Um, CN... I'm going to have a go because I think it's one of those ones that's at the very bottom that was kind of made um, almost artificially. I'm going to have a try for Californium. 
Californium. Let's just check this. Kevin, is there a Californium? Yes. Yes, there is. What's the symbol for Californium? I think it might actually be CF. CF. You're right about that. So it's not this, oh. Joe. It's Copernicium. Oh. So, Beth, you have a chance to take the round now. What is the name of the 115-meter redwood discovered in Northern California in 2006 that is believed to be the tallest tree in the world? Now I have a horrible feeling I've heard of this. And why can I only get Old Faithful? I can't get... I oh, know Old Faithful's not the right answer, because that's a geezer. Um, I don't know. Could be anything. Let's go with Tall Joe. No. Any any challenges know this? No, no we have not a clue. Hyperion. Oh. Is the answer. Hyperion was a titan. Okay. Look, I think my name is better. <laughs> <laughs> So, sudden death. We're level. Here we go. Your question, Joe. Okay. Which scientist, born in New Zealand in 1871, won the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1908? Need a first name and a surname. Um, New Zealand scientist, 70, uh, 18... 1871. 1871. In chemistry. Um, who was chemists? Um... Paulie was a physicist. Um, it's really irritating. My dad would know this because he's a chemist and he'll know it instantly. He'll be shouting at the screen going, I've told you about who this was. Um, would it be... No, it's not going to be any of the team who unfurled DNA because that's later. Um, Rutherford is a physicist. Um, I'm really struggling for names of chemists now. Right, I'm going to come up with a sort of nonsense name of something, but you never know. I'm going to go for Edward Rutherford as a name off the top of my head. I genuinely haven't got a clue. Ah! Go on. Ernest Rutherford. There's something in the back of my brain. Oh. You're right, you're I can't believe it. It's agony. Now, he said physicist and it's He did, and Joe was so right. Well, Ernest Rutherford was a world-famous physicist. But he did say the fastest transformation he ever knew was with Nobel Committee, who changed him from a physicist into a chemist right. because they'd already awarded the Nobel Prize in Physics that year. Oh, well, I tell you what, Joe, good play. Let's see, so, Beth, you can take the round with this question. Which name is given to any of the five species of bird of the family Fregatidae, the males of which possess bright red throat pouches which they inflate in courtship displays? Now, bowery birds are the ones that feather their nests with all lots of funky things. Oh, 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 oh. Now, why would that name have come to... I'm thinking frigate birds. Now, why would that name have come to me unless I thought it was the answer? I've got a feeling that they've got the big red jowls. Yeah, I'm going to go with that frigate birds. Good quizzing, Beth. Frigate Bird is the right answer. Well done. You're in the final. Sorry, Joe. You played well, though. That was good play. Seriously. So close. So close. Beaten by our egghead, who's leveled things up. Return to us, please. We'll see what round three holds. So, as it stands, duh, de de dum yeah. I've lost one brain from the final round. The eggheads have lost one as well, and we play on with history. Now, so it's Samira or Emma or Steve. What do you want to feel? Well, it's 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 the one I'm least. Okay, I'll do it then. Okay, okay. all right. Good. Okay, Samira, great stuff. Okay. And against which egghead? So you can oh. have Chris or Barry or Judith. Chris. Yeah. Chris. Gotta get Chris. Samira from Dirty De Dum versus Chris from the Eggheads. All right. A good, Chris. That's good. We're up for this. Okay. <laughs> Please go to our famous question room. <laughs> 